Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Olivia Grace. Welcome to WoW Insider. We are going to just run you through the six things you need to know about patch 5.4. So first up, let's talk about Virtual Realms and the in-game store. Why are we lumping these two together into one? Because we're not absolutely certain precisely how they're going to work just yet. So we know that patch 5.4 will bring both Virtual Realms and potentially the in-game store, but we don't know many details. Virtual Realms are essentially temporarily merge realms and the in-game store is just what it sounds like it's going to be a way for you to purchase items via an in-game interface rather than heading out onto the blizzard store websites Now the next thing that we're getting in patch 5.4 is the Timeless Isle. So you can see here that I'm actually on the Timeless Isle. The location of it is to the east of Jade Forest. And basically what it is, is a kind of open playground. Now you can see here that I am on the initial exploration quest, which is kind of a breadcrumb quest. And you're running around in this area and there's just rares everywhere. There are rares absolutely all over the place. You can see obviously I'm, I'm killing one now. It's a it's an elite adder and it's gonna, it's gonna try and bite me and it, they do quite a lot of damage but they're not that difficult to kill and basically what you're doing on the timeless isle which is quite different to what you've been doing in sort of these daily quest zones and hubs in the past is that you're literally just doing what you want you're running around it's not guided content it's not led it's really just a playground a sandbox a kind of free-for-all area and as you're killing rares and doing sort of various different options for tasks and I mean I'm trying really hard to make it sound like there's not anything obligatory that you're having to do but you are getting these items called timeless coins which you can see here and they are basically a currency that is exclusive to the timeless isle they are spent at vendors to get various different items such as as um, gear such as potions etc anything you can think of you can spend time with coins to get you're also getting lesser charms as you saw there and um, basically all you're doing is just running around having fun it's kind of a cool new concept and it's kind of the sort of logical evolution of the 5.3 battlefield barons content if you look at it as a shift from you know 5.0 and 5.1 we had a very heavy daily quest focus content 5.2 we had the Isle of Thunder content which again was still very very daily focused but also offered rares and a few other ways to get your stuff to get what you wanted um, Battlefield Barons again was slightly looser and now going into the Timeless Isle we've got all sorts of fun new things that you can do so we're looking here, there's, for example, you can eat all the fruit off the trees to get healed. It's so cool. It's just loads of tiny little fun things. And um, once you've actually done the initial exploration quests, there are daily quests, which I like a, a law quiz, which is really, really good fun if you're into the law side of things. Personally, I couldn't do it at all. And um, there are rares to kill us, I think I've mentioned. But there are also things like this, which is just a, a really, really straightforward little jumping puzzle. So you're jumping from the tops of the pillars to the tops of the pillars. You see someone else comes with me there and uh, makes the next jump. And unfortunately, they don't, um, which is good for me because at the end of this little jumping chain of pillars, there is actually a chest, which is what we're looking for here. Those will be familiar to anyone who's done the treasure room scenario in patch 5.2. But literally all you're getting here is, is a chest and you're getting another couple of coins from in there. It's really, really fun content. It's really, it's really sort of loose and free and there's no questing. And it's just a great new addition for patch 5.4. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about here is the addition of cross-realm arena teams. Now, there's been so much other stuff going on in patch 5.4 that people have all but forgotten about this rather early announcement. So if you, we've gone up into the PvP pane here, and you can actually see that the arena teams tab at the bottom is completely missing. There is no longer an arena teams tab in the PvP section at all. So all you need to do to queue now for 2v2, 3v3, or 5v5 is be within a group of that size so obviously for two you need a group of two for three you need a group of three for five you need a group of five your rating is now personal rating it's no longer a team rating and your conquest points earned week on week are based off that personal rating and you can see there that obviously you've got a win-loss record and that's about it really for that feature pretty straightforward but still a big news for arena teams 
Now, moving into the next piece of news, we've got flexible raiding. Now, I mean, it's amazing how much stuff is coming in patch 5.4. So you can see here that flexible raiding is designed for different size groups. It's what we always thought they'd never do because it would be too difficult to scale the encounters, but you need a group of between 10 and 25 people. Um, and basically it drops item level 540 loot. So if we go into the, um, the dungeon journal here, you can see that there's an additional difficulty added in now, the flexible raiding difficulty for between 10 and 25 people. And looking at Immersius, obviously I'm not in a raid group as I'm taking this footage, but you can see here that the numbers are slightly different, that there's, there's, there's just variances between 10 and, 20, uh, 10 and 25 and this 10 to 25 difficulty. Um, you do need to have a group of a minimum size of 10, but currently they are looking to make it so that the 10 man difficulty is the minimal scaling. So you could theoretically head into the raid with eight people and have the 10 man version available to you. However, that is not 100% confirmed just yet. The final feature I'm going to look at today is Proving Grounds. Now you can see here that they are located in the Temple of the White Tiger in Kunlai Summit. You fly in, and by the way, just as an aside, if you see a white ghostly tiger when you fly into there, you haven't done the first three quests just to get into the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. So just do those quests, it'll take you five minutes and then you'll be off. Speaking to this chap queues you up for a scenario, and as you can see here, we're just gonna enter into the scenario. I'm hoping that this, the way that this has been set up will allow the option for additional different locations for this, because it's not the most exciting place, but they're really good fun. So speaking to the guy again here, we can open up his interface. And you can see that obviously I've been doing some of these before, but you can queue up for the initial bronze difficulty. There's also a reforger, a repair guy who sells some food and a healthstone option available at the side there. Now we're looking at the healing one here and anyone who heals will be very relieved to know that you can heal with your normal uh, add-ons. So clique, you've got voodoo, you've got healbot, all of those sorts of normal add-ons will work perfectly in this content. There is no need to worry there. And basically what you're doing is you're, you're racing against the clock. So you can see at the right hand side, there is a timer there, which is starting to flash. Now, obviously we're actually fine that it's starting to flash because we're at the end of our wave. But then as, as the timer runs out, another wave will appear. For tanking, it's exactly the same. For DPS, it's exactly the same. So here, obviously we're healing. So we've got a party of five to deal with. And this is the bronze difficulty. This is the easy difficulty. It's, it's very straightforward. Um, and as it ramps up, you go through the silver and the gold and then into endless mode, which is a real pure competitive mode for the more serious player. Um, the bronze mode is definitely there as a tutorial. It's designed to help people learn how to play a new role, learn how to play a new class perhaps. But it's still really good fun and it's just it's it's straightforward content and there are various different things that you have to deal with in the tanking one you've got a party of two which is just yourself and one npc and that one npc will do the damage and the healing for you leaving you free just to tank stuff in the dps version you've got just yourself racing against the clock to kill things as quickly as possible while also doing stuff like interrupting like kiting not standing in the bad all that sort of thing Altogether, these are a fantastic addition. They're a really good training tool for people who might want to learn a new role, might want to learn a new class, a new spec, anything along those lines. I do hope you've enjoyed this roundup of the six things you need to know about patch 5.4. I wanted to do five things, but there were, there's really too many things. There are other things I could have added into here. So there's an absolute ton of content coming. And this has been a special for Geek Week. So I hope you've all been enjoying the Geek Week content that's been available out there. And we'll hope to see you again for some more great video content here at WoW Insider.